Welcome to Zero Rights Reserved, Episode 2. This is a weekly podcast all about nouns, NFTs, DAOs, Ethereum, and more, brought to you by the Noun Square Media Collective. I'm your host, Tody Hawk, joined here also by Jack Wilds from the TNS team. We're going to be joined uh, by Roy Suprio from the Atrium team in a little bit to talk about nouns, a movie. Super excited for today's conversation. What's new with you, Jack? How you doing? Not much, just pumped for talking about movies. And we're mixing it with something that I truly love, which is nouns. So uh, I'm having a good day so far. How about you? I'm doing great, too. Uh, animation has been a pretty common theme in Nouns Dow recently. Obviously, we had the Short Shorts Festival, uh, which if you didn't hear about that, dear listener, uh, there was a group that was funded by the Dow basically to go and commission a bunch of awesome animated shorts about different topics uh, from talented animators all over the world. And then they put those together into a film festival that went live uh, in L.A. and also in Melbourne at the same time. Uh, really cool event. Really awesome to see you know art being created and animated animations being done featuring the nouns but in the styles of all these talented artists and i think that got a lot of people thinking about like how can a dao as a decentralized body be like an executive producer or a patron of the arts uh, to get people creating all this amazing stuff what, what do you think jack is that a, is that a new paradigm i think it is i think it's uh, it's definitely changing the way people are looking at at, at creating and building on worlds that exist with the ability to kind of do it in whatever way they want. I do kind of wonder, though, is that bad at a certain point? Like, if somebody wanted to come out and do, I don't know, something hurtful or harmful, but with the CC0 assets, what do you think about that? Is that a risk that it's just we're hoping that all people will be good? It's interesting you mentioned that because whenever you see a debate about CC0 licensing, uh, and I've been in, I've been on a lot of spaces where that has been discussed, that invariably is brought up by people who are against CC0 saying, well, you know, uh, the Nazi argument, someone's going to eventually make, you know, Nazi nouns, and, and what are you going to do then? Uh, but the reality is, is like I've been pretty active in nouns and, and cryptodes community, another CC0 IP uh, community for, you know, almost two years now. And the reality is I haven't seen it, not to say it won't happen, but uh, I've seen a, a hell of a lot of really awesome, creative, positive creation happening from those IPs. And I haven't seen anyone take the effort necessary to go and make something hurtful. Not to say it wouldn't happen, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, and also, I just think like, I don't know if it's if it matters that much. Like I think that's kind of one of the beautiful things about letting IP go free. Mm-hmm. And if people do something that is that is, you know, distasteful, I think it won't resonate because it won't match the brand identity that is being created even though there's no like head of branding for nouns. There is like an emergent value set, an emergent brand that is being created by all these different artists and builders through the space and if something comes out that's diametrically opposed to that, not to say it couldn't hurt the brand, quote unquote, but I think it's not going to resonate with most people. And most people will be like, something's off here, you know, just like if you went and you created a Nazi Mickey Mouse, you know, animation and put it on YouTube, not only would you get sued, most people would also see that. And they're probably not going to say, oh, this is, you know, this is officially Dis- <laughs> official Disney. Well, exa- I, mean, I kind of feel the exact same way. I'm, I'm with you. I, I just wanted to open up that dialogue because I also feel like. If somebody is willing to put hate speech or hateful things on a character and send them out on the internet, I doubt they even care if it's CC0, right? I mean, they're going to use whatever they want. It's trolling. They're trying to do something, you know, to cause a a reaction and and stir up emotion in people. Uh, So I don't, I think CC0 lends actually to more people who are trying to do good things and trying to build new and, and, interesting things that just need a baseline or just want something that they can work off that doesn't cost them so much money to license or they don't want to create their own world you know they just want to build i sometimes i listen to uh fan fiction stuff i know it sounds weird where you're just merging worlds like you and i think it's so cool uh the fact that you know that nouns is able to do that with everything else in the CC zero universe is it's really cool to me. I like it. 
Yeah, I definitely want to talk to Suprio about that later in our conversation, uh, just about how, you know, CC0 makes world building so much easier to draw in from all the different areas of the Nowniverse that have already been creating all these stories and all this lore a little bit at a time over two years. And I want to ask him what it's been like as a creator and for the rest of the folks working on the Nouns movie to sort of be able to draw from all that inspiration and, and make it their own. Amazing. Well, I'm super excited for this conversation. Um, as we said earlier in the show, we are going to be joined here very shortly by Suprio uh, from Atrium. They are the ones who have been funded by Nouns to create a movie uh, based on Nouns. It's being released in tranches. Uh, already one has been released, so there's been a pilot that was released to much fanfare. It's got over, what, is it, Jack, 100,000, you said? 114,000, I think, in four weeks views on on youtube so really hitting it hitting with people really cool style uh, amazing visuals amazing score uh super excited to talk to him about what it was like to create that first chapter uh, and they've also just been funded now to create a second chapter essentially uh, of what is a mini series but will eventually be turned into a full scale uh, animated film funded by a decentralized producer in this case which is nouns so super excited for that uh, let's uh, jump right into it. My mom always taught me that the key to a happy life is to never look down on anyone. Which is hard to do when you live in the sky. First of all, I just wanted to kind of uh, hear about the man behind the movie. We want to hear about Suprio. We'd love to hear about your journey, maybe a little bit about your career before Nouns, if you wouldn't mind sharing. Sounds good. Well, uh, I am not from art or entertainment background, so I come from uh, tech. So before uh, Atrium and uh, Nouns movie, I used to be in tech for the last 15 years, uh, was leading part in design at Alexa for the smartphone division, have been in crypto for, I think, since 20, late 18, um, played with NFTs, uh, crypto kitties, have been following a lot of the early movement from that time. Um, 21 decided to jump in full time, mostly because of like really early experiments like nouns came to be and started pushing the boundaries of what it needs to, what it means to be composable IP, which people can build on top of. And that was really interesting uh, to follow along. And uh, I would say, you know, like, despite all the hiccups along the way, uh, nouns definitely are a force to be reckoned with. I love that. So we're going to hear uh, uh, Alexa play Nouns a movie in the future? Is that, is that coming? <laughs> well, if I your old context? Them, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I'd love to hear a little bit about, since you guys are making a movie, I'd like to hear about maybe some of your favorite movies from, from your childhood. Is there any that stand out? What's your favorite, like, let's say, let's uh, say non-animated and animated films? Putting you on the spot. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a great one. Well, um, I would say animated, probably Toy Story. Um, Classic. I would say Aladdin. Uh, I would say The Lion King. They were like really, really uh, good ones. Um, Non-animated. Hmm. I think I would go for like uh, Kill Bill, uh, A New Hope. Um, I would say even the first Alien, uh, the 1978-80, I think, yeah. Those good, would good be choices. my faves. Yeah. Very good <laughs> choices. I'd love to hear what made you want to go from tech into this kind of an artistic endeavor, coming from a background at Alexa, like you mentioned, and, and some other things. Was it nouns yeah. that pushed you in that direction, or were you kind of already sort of exploring what it might be like to... I um, definitely, I think, uh, I would say it was the advent uh, of NFT and IP experiments, as I said, right? So I think four years ago, the idea of 
owning an internet internet native IP like collectively with a larger group was not a thing. Four years ago, you would not talk about, oh, you know, I own this IP with these cool friends I made on the internet, right? So <laughs> that was a really fascinating scenario. And now um, I started to think about what does it mean when you talk about IP, whether, you know, like, is it an image on the internet which everybody likes? Do you build on top of it? What do you really build? Like, is it comic books? Is it stories? Is it, is it haikus? Is it like a TikTok channel, right? Or is it long form? And when we started to look into long form, I personally wanted to, uh, being an animation nerd, I wanted to make uh, animation with the internet native IPs I kind of fell in love with. And when I started digging into cost, I started digging into efficiencies and who makes it happen. I, what I realized was that it was a really big walled garden, um, you know, traditionally gate kept with the same usual suspects and it costs an astronomical amount of money to make something nice. And then you start to dig deeper into why does it cost so much, right? Where does the money really go? And how do people explore these um, form factors uh, in terms of... Is it lavish output? parties? Is that where it goes? Uh, uh, La uh, lavish really. Pixar uh, parties? Uh, there, no. there, there, there is something called uh, famous Hollywood accounting. It's, 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 <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's, it's a topic for another day. But long story short, animation is really time consuming and expensive and majority of the people, including in like NFT industry, have no idea how expensive it can really get. And we wanted to make something where we could bring the artists who are necessarily not happy with the status quo at Hollywood and match make them with the IP owners and IP properties who exist in this new sort of internet native era and uh, sort of bring them together to create you know like new properties so that's where atrium came to be at its meta level it's basically a group of internet native top of the line sort of top, the top of the craft uh, animation industry veterans who want to chart their own path who want to work with these properties to create things which are not necessarily coming from a Hollywood gate kept model and you know like that essentially inspired this and I would say Atrium has worked on other smaller productions sort of before but uh, Nouns movie was the first large scale, large scale endeavor we took within the NFT realm. You touched on Atrium there just now I'd love to hear a little bit about the history of Atrium how did what is Atrium first of all for people who are listening in um, tell, tell us what Atrium is and, and how did it come to be? Yeah, Atrium is a Web3 native collective of independent artists and studios across the world. So uh, on Atrium, you have uh, animation veterans, sound designers, musicians, script writers, everybody together. And what we do is we essentially create long form content of really good stories based on uh, new IPs. And uh, that, that's essentially what Atrium is at its core. We are trying to create really optimized sort of remote first workflows, which make the process incredibly fast and incredibly efficient at the same time to, while not compromising quality. So when we are looking at- So in at a way, it's kind of like a, a decentralized studio in a way? Is that a good way of putting yes, it? Yes, yes, that's a good way to put it. If, if you like, um, the productions coming from A24, right? Like everything, everywhere, all at once, like similar movies. I would say Atrium is kind of like a decentralized A24. What attracted you all to do nouns at first? Like what, what makes nouns, I don't know, fun to animate? Well, um, I think because nouns A was CC0, it was blue sky. So, you know, like you, when we came to nouns, we wanted to come to an IP where we have free reign in terms of what we would want to create and no specific boundaries on, hey, you can do this or you can't do this, right? So when we started making um, like specific renditions of what nouns would be in this movie, 
we didn't want to just simply, you know, like create a 3D version of what the Pixelate announced looked like. We wanted to create something really, really unique, push boundaries on aesthetics as well. And uh, yeah, I think that probably would not have been possible in a more restrictive IP where you are told what you can do, what you can't do. What about no. the flip side of that? Like you're, you're using nouns as CC0, building on top of it. I believe you've also chosen to make most of your nanish work CC0, if I'm not mistaken, as well on the other side. Is that right? Yeah, so I would yeah. say uh, for the nouns movie itself, like the movie currently is owned by the Atrium Creatives um, because it's our unique rendition of the Code Nouns IP. Um, okay. But a lot of the infra and like the assets and things which we are building, we are releasing as we go. So like people are free to use it, remix it, whatever they would want to do with it. Um, uh, one of the things I think, uh, which you mentioned flip side, right? Uh, flip side is that early on when the brand is it in, in a nascent phase, you would want some sort of a curated guidance on what people can do with the brand. Because if the idea there is that you want to uphold to like a certain quality, a certain things, which the brand wants to signal early on in terms of what it wants to stand for. Um, I think it becomes really important. So uh, if we were to do something which people wouldn't like or which we wanted to create, which nouns necessarily collectively would not stand for, that would put the DAO in a pickle. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to go ahead with funding the movie in tranches where we keep sharing what we are building and now see it and only if the community likes how it's headed, likes a certain bar of quality we are trying to uphold, they keep funding. Like while it's not efficient compared to, you know, getting all the funding it in one go traditionally, this does make uh, for more transparency and puts the team uh, or to be more accountable. I just, it almost feels like nouns are executive producers. If you yes, have Yes, they are. Yeah, they and are. it's... <laughs> I was going to ask, and I, I'm really interested in this. You kind of covered it just now, but what is it like? Is this the first first film to ever be funded this way in in sections uh, as it goes on? Yes. Normally, you just get big funding. This yes. is like completely new, right? It is completely new. The the nothing about this has been done before. So you know whether it's the funding in tranches. Uh, whether, you know, it's reviewing certain aspects, uh, highlights of the movie, if you will, with the nouns, as well as the way it is being made. So, for instance, when you're typically looking at an animation production, it's done in phases. So you would do entirety of the pre-production work at, at the beginning, right? Like 3D modeling, character design, concept work, all of that stuff before. And then you get into animation design and then you eventually go to post-production now here we are doing that entire process each time over with every segment so we are doing the entire workflow of pre-production we are doing the entire workflow of you know voice artist recruitment casting them um, doing sessions music sound design everything animation and then post-production and then releasing it and then building it on we go and another thing which we are looking at is we are also accounting for when the entire thing would be stitched together into a single feature, certain segments might not make sense at that time. So we might go back and revisit them so that they feel more continuous. That is something right. which we are already uh, thinking about, uh, you know, like buffering for. So by saying that, are you are you saying that these are not necessarily, these tranches are not necessarily going to be chronological? Is that... Kind of what you're getting no, at. They, they are available. going to be chronological. They okay. are, but you wouldn't be able to just go ahead and stitch them in a video, right? So, for instance, the next episode, we would want to bring people back, rejog their memory a little bit on what happened right, in yeah. the pilot, and then last pick time up on, on the, announced yeah, movie. Yeah, yes, yeah. yes, uh, and then pick back up on certain aspects there, and um, you know, like then go into episode one and things like that. So, I think. That's something which uh, is what we are trying to do here. And another thing is that you probably have noticed because nouns are the EP and they are funding this, the entire story is centered and revolving around nouns. But what we do want to do is we want to use this artifact as a way to proliferate nouns, right? 
bring more people into the fold and you might have started seeing that oh we are bringing in more sub communities other satellite communities into the universe where they are sort of like net additive into the story it's interesting too because in this way every episode almost needs to end in a cliffhanger where in an actual film yes. you know it's going to be a three part <laughs> arc there's not really going to be these constant <gasps> you know drop and stop so i i was wondering how the, how you guys would handle that uh when stitching together and that actually makes me feel really good that it it really is going to turn into a film and not just a mini series yes that's correct. then again uh, like I, disney and yeah. netflix have done a lot of work in making mini series um palatable right. to the general True. population you know they're 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 used to it you know i, I would say most of the uh, the new productions that come out from from Netflix and and Disney and, and these other streamers Prime are miniseries because they know that people have short attention spans and they'd rather watch something in 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 ten tranches rather than all together. And we're just all used to um, you know skip intro, skip intro, skip intro. So um, well, yeah, it's almost like you can consume this one two different ways. Then so you're getting more than one thing. It feels like you know some people might just want to put in a film or a movie and then other people can watch it. Uh, serialized, and that's really, really cool. It's the old 10 seasons Absolutely. in a movie, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we're yeah, we're yeah. getting all of them together. <laughs> and, uh, you know, like that goes back to my initial inspiration I talked to you about. Like, if you remember the Kill Bill series, it was broken up in arcs and chapters. Right, so, yeah. Well, it, at its core essence, it's very similar. Uh, but what we do want to do is once the movie is sort of closed and like almost towards the end when it's being finished we would be able to you know go into discussions with like distribution partners or whether they would want to do the whole series or they would want to do it in a movie repurposing way so we are yeah. also recording uh, the audios across different ranges so like the stereo uh, surround sound dolby as well depending on you know how people would want to use that effect i'd love to hear what is Nouns a movie? Tell people who haven't heard of it before. What what is this project that you're doing that's now been funded uh, for two tranches by the Dow? Uh, what, what's the overview? Yeah, so Nouns the movie is an action adventure comedy animated feature film to be funded by the Nouns Dow. Um, it explores the adventure of a 13 year old noun who essentially bands up with a group of misfits who are the nouns. Uh, to go and save the world he lives in and believes in. And that's that's the premise, that's kind of the logline. And uh, what we are trying to do here with the Nouns the Movie is create a really high quality story which is done entirely remotely. So I think um, that's something which is one of the standout aspect of it here. And um, the last one is Nouns movie is also probably one of the most cost-effective animated movie till date, if you compare quality compared to the other animation movies which has come out recently. So that it is looks something great. Which, it looks great. Yeah. So we, we definitely have been going for like a mix of uh, Into the Spider-Verse sort of Studio Ghib- Ghibli, Miyazaki, and Pixar vibe. So it's not super polished like Pixar, but it has its own very calm sort of uh, aesthetic, which is unique uh, to the movie setup. Absolutely. I wanted to bring something up that I'm not sure if you're aware of, but it's kind of a coincidence. Did you know that there is a 13 year old Nowner? No. Interesting. I did not know that. <laughs> so the, you've probably heard of Ugly Dow. Ugly Dow is a sub Dow within Nouns, which is a group right. of uh, ni- nineteen people. I was one of the founders myself. Uh, we just decided to buy two Nouns to govern together and collaborate together. And right. one of the members of the Dow of, of the Dow from early days is the Swami uh, from Australia, uh, and his sorry. daughter, little Blueberry, little purple Blueberry, was twelve years old when she joined the Dow. Uh, her father staked her her portion to purchase part of Noun 472, making her, I believe, the youngest 
you know, part nouner in the Nouniverse. She's That's since cool. turned 13. She's spoken actually at, at NFT, uh, was it Melbourne? Yeah, in NFT Melbourne in, in Australia. She spoke uh, and uh, gave gave sort of uh, her story about how she got involved in nouns. And I, think, awesome. I just thought it was kind of interesting. So kind of a, an interesting parallel to the, the main character in your movie. Plus, Little Purple Blueberry, Blues, I don't know. It's, <laughs> like the universe is Definitely. trying to tell us something. Yes, stars are aligned. <laughs> I know that it's CC0, so you're able to kind of do, you're, you're kind of able to build it how you want. You said you really wanted to create the world. Could you tell us a little bit about the inspiration and world building uh, yes. for this amazing place? I mean, it's not anything I would have thought of. It's awesome. Yeah. So I think one of the things which, uh, like the core aesthetic, we are calling it internally cloud punk. So it's a mix of uh, steampunk and sky sky uh, sort of aesthetic, real open sort of world vibes there. One one of the things which we wanted to do was at its core, um, nouns is about being creative and being weird, right? So we wanted to create a world which doesn't necessarily follow the laws of physics, right? So in that sense, we wanted to create, you know, like floating giant mega structures and flying fishes in the sky and things which don't make sense, right? So when we are looking at the protagonist, Ki, uh, we would be introduced to his parents uh, in this uh, new segment and uh, they are not necessarily humans. So does it need to be a human? What does it mean for Ki to be a noun? Where does it come from? And things like that we'll start to explore. It becomes a lot more colorful and weird in that sense. So I think from a world design standpoint, we Zen and HK, the co-directors of the movie, they were really pushing forward for original concepts, not something which you would look at and feel that, oh, I have seen this before. Very cool. And I think th there's a temptation to do that when the assets are CC0 and you can literally just take them as is and, and do what you like with them. And people have done and to great effect, but I think um, you're right that it's more powerful to take inspiration and, and build something unique. Absolutely. Yeah, it very much elevates it. Um, I Are the same animators, because this is going to be done in trenches, are the same core people working on each episodic version? Or, you know, it is so it's always going to be the same people working on it. It's not like... It, yeah, the same core people, I think, okay. at the core, the same music director, the same co-directors from the animation and like the 3D aesthetic standpoint. And then we have the rest of the team, which is being brought in and out of, in like in demand, depending on how the scope is. So for instance, the last one, the overall team was about 17 people. Uh, so 17 people working for 90 days together, created the pilot. Now this one, we are looking at about 43 people because the time is the same amount of time and the overall animation uh, length is about three times more, right? So we need more people to make it happen and that that's where this crew is getting scaled up but now that this segment is the first longer length segment for 90 days we would likely retain the majority of the crew for the remaining segments because the remaining segments will start to accelerate so we'll get to them faster and faster I'm, I'm sure that a lot of people in the industry would probably think you're crazy for trying to make a movie in, in chunks like this, where, like you said, each time <laughs> there are certain things you have to you have to redo each time, right? Yes, so they're probably yes. like, you're crazy. Like the worst parts of the job, getting everybody organized, getting everybody, yeah. you know, ready, ready. You got to do that every time now instead of just once at the start and the end. Right. And I mean, I have heard, heard that a couple of times already. I think one of the things which... Um, so far in the discussions, uh, I have heard is a, uh, yes, uh, the team is crazy for attempting something like this, but they are extremely impressed by the quality and the cost effectiveness of it so far. And they love how a DAO like Nouns is basically at the helm of it. They like that a DAO is being really forward thinking and taking, you know, like big swings like these to explore a format which has not been done before. 
I think we've seen that a lot in recent days with Nouns, with the Nouns Short Short Festival. Yes. You know, all these amazing animators who were commissioned to make beautiful art. And there's been a few other examples recently as well. And it really makes me super excited, the idea of Nouns as a DAO being like a patron of animation, being like an executive producer, like Jack said earlier. Can you talk a little bit about that? Like, how do you see the landscape changing in the future for, for animation uh, if if this, you know, has a meaningful impact and in the future we see more of this? Yeah, I would say um, that one of the things which uh, was really useful for us in terms of recruiting people was that while we were not able to, you know, like pay beyond the market rates, the fact that as a creator, they were to be celebrated being part of nouns and that it was being made such in an open sense it was something they could go and brag about in terms of their career, like right away, right? Like a lot. Often you would see animators being involved in a project for two years. All of the IP belongs to the studio. The project gets scanned. You have nothing to show for it. You can't talk about it. You can't show it off. And it's a waste of your time. And, you know, it's not, you know, outlandishly incentivize in terms of financials and numbers like it that doesn't make sense for most of the people and the majority of the vfx industry is like that it's a revolving door so when you are looking at um wally or when you're looking at elementals like the 200 million dollar budgets most of it has been going to you know like executives and you know like um star voices and things like that and a very small amount sort of goes into the long tail because so many people are involved so what we are trying to do here is we're trying to flip that model that oh you probably don't need 300 people working on it you could get the job done with maybe 50 but every single one of them have a much better portion of crediting much better highlights they are shown into and like celebrated as well so i think that that's something which is a really big pull here this makes me wonder, and I'm, I'm really sorry if this was in the proposal and I just missed it, but not only are we going to be getting these trenches and episodic uh, versions of the show, we'll also get a movie at the end as long as it continues to get funded, but I also feel like this could... Are You guys, you guys released some behind-the-scenes footage of the score. Uh, yes. I feel like you guys should be taking a lot of behind-the-scenes footage, and this could almost be turned into a new format documentary of ways to do things like that's that in right. itself is already an advertisement for nouns i think it would be incredible i would love to see that the behind the scenes of what you guys are doing absolutely we 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 are planning a lot more this time around like uh voice recording sessions more music sessions as well um and as well you know like the actual workflow behind the scenes on the character design and animation rigs and things like that that's we, awesome. we want the we want the NFT version of a director's cut DVD next time, <laughs> where like Ooh, you know, the, the that, directors that, go right through the fun. whole thing. <laughs> that would be fun. I would I would buy that. that. Would be fun. I would, wood mint, wood mint. Zero Pod is produced by the Noun Square, a decentralized media collective funded by Nouns DAO. In addition to generous funding from the DAO, we also rely on sponsorships from other values-aligned protocols and communities from around Web3. One such sponsor is OnChain Monkey. OnChain Monkey is a network of like-minded innovators, entrepreneurs, athletes, artists, philanthropists, and investors with a shared goal of generating wealth to empower the community to have a positive impact on the world. OnChain Monkey's Genesis Collection was the first on-chain 10k PFP to be launched in a single Ethereum transaction. And now the team are once again leading the charge for NFTs on Bitcoin with their recent groundbreaking Dimensions Collection. To find out more, head over to OnChainMonkey.com. By the way, in, in the first tranche of this, which was basically the pilot. I want to talk to you in just a minute about, about how that was, what it was like to put that out in the world and what the response was like. But I just want yeah. to point out, uh, Nowny Clock here made yeah. an appearance, the mascot you for the Noun Square. Um, <laughs> thank you. It's awesome to see our little mascot uh, being immortalized. Uh, talk a little bit about the different Easter eggs that you guys kind of put in to, to shout out to different communities like ours around the Nouniverse and what your thinking was on that. Yeah, absolutely. I think one of the things which we were thinking about that 
there are so many sub communities which sort of represent the Naunish culture and expand on it. We wanted to make sure that it's not just being like doing fan service, it's kind of done in a meaningful way. So when we were looking at the TNS square, we were thinking, oh, what if there was the center of the city, which sort of builds upon this idea of a TNS square? inside blues it's not going to look the exact same but we'll get okay. there as the yeah as as the movie progresses so and and the idea there was that if the nouns can look whichever way they wanted to look at like are there toys are there merchandises inside the movie which you know he played with when he was growing up and things like that so we we sort of sprinkle these eggs along, along the lines like in the next segment for instance we have an interesting segment where we portray Lil Nouns as a group together um, in, oh, wow. in the sequence. So I, I think uh, that was one of the things which we wanted to do uh, when we wanted to do Easter eggs, where we sort of pay homage to all of these sub communities which have been built on top of the nouns. And then on the third side of it was as we bring in um, more communities, say the Huxleys and the Chimpers and the bunch of other communities who are not necessarily noun driven, but they want to be part of the story. If an Huxley robot is coming, how can that be nounish? So we would be working with Ben Mauro, who is the co-designer of Huxley, to you know like pick a specific robot from the Huxley saga and nounify him and that's a unique nounified rendition of the robot who's going to be featured inside similar to you know chimpers master chimpo uh, who is basically the mascot of the chimpers project he uh, is going to be making an appearance but you know like it's going to be all additive to them sort of helping me elevate through his story as well and I the heard idea that, is I heard- yeah. I heard that Tempers so, guy is a big fan of nouns too. So they are, they are, they are, they, they absolutely are. And and what we want to do is we also have been uh, expanding on these characters being added as a really curated sort of profile identities within the universe. You might have seen me using Jaws Hardback's profile as my profile picture, and the nouns movie handle uses Gee's profile picture as a profile picture as well so we are thinking down the line as the movie is further along we probably would have opportunity to introduce those profile pictures as like a smaller sort of curated um mint maybe perhaps which people would be able to use i i think this is an underrated element of cc0 is like the collective world building that happens when you take all of the copyright out of the equation and it kind of reminds me i'm not uh, i'm not really into dungeons and dragons but i have a friend who is and it kind of reminds me a little bit of that world and how you know they just kind of let people go nuts making up their own stories and their own characters right. etc with with certain like slight guidelines and as a result you have all this lore that has been built and and taken into all these other properties. Like the the biggest example I can think of off the top of my head would be World Warcraft. You know, like almost exactly. almost all the characters from War, Warcraft are somehow related back to Dungeons and Dragons. And so I was going somewhere with this, but with nouns, it's kind of similar. Where you know you're 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 building a world, but you have some of this stuff to draw on. You have the square from TNS. You have the little nouns clan from Little Nouns, and you can yes. kind of pull that together and, and build on top of it. Um, do you have any, any thoughts on, on that? Yeah, I think uh, that that's probably uh, an easy way for us to, you know, like come in and add and we are not essentially, you know, going through a ton of like uh, legal approvals or figuring out like IP uh, specific usage rights and things like that. When we are creating these things, it's really, really easy for us to be creative mm-hmm. and just do what we do best versus like, getting down out in the overhead here. I saw that you put out a casting call, um, yes. looking for new citizens and building this world. And, you know, that's a, a kind of what we've been talking about. Is that going to be something that will happen with each trench or? Yes. Uh, okay. So if somebody missed this casting call because the podcast came out late, the next time right. they come around, you guys <laughs> should jump in. Absolutely. And uh, the it's idea still of the open though, isn't call, it? It's open until the 24th, yes, right? Until the 24th, oh, yeah. yes. We'll see, you it, might it's have missed It's pretty it. lightweight. Yeah, so if you 
can spare 10 minutes of your time, just go in and fill it. It's, it's fine. And uh, what we want to do with the casting call was it's not a popularity contest. So we are not using, you know, voting to pick people. Um, we are delegating that decision to the core sort of team. So the core creative team and, you know, William, who is writing the story, he basically reserves the right to pick. And whoever doesn't get picked automatically gets carried over for the next one. So we'll keep expanding the pool we can pick from and use it. Now, you might see an application from a certain toady frog. So <laughs> I did see put that. Put that one on the top of the pot. <laughs> top of the pot. Also, can, can we commit? Can, can we get a live commitment here? Well, it's not live, but, you know, can we get a commitment here that you'll keep it open until midnight on Monday? Because if so, we can yes. get this pot out on Monday. Yes. And then we can tell yes. people in the pod right now, go get your character into the Absolutely. casting call. We, we, we can today. keep it up. Yeah, we can. We can keep it on. Yeah. Okay. Where do they go to do that? Just so we can direct them in the right place. Yeah, you you could uh, see the pin tweet on uh, the Nouns Movie Twitter, and okay. uh, I can. Yeah, there, there's a link there. Um, so it's it's a right. small. We'll throw the link form. in the yeah. podcast notes as well. So, do you want to talk? Uh, can we get any spoilers? I saw a tweet recently about the frowns, or the frowns are coming. What mm -hmm. What are the frowns? Who are the frowns? I don't well, even know if I want uh, to know. They sound pretty, they sound pretty scary. <laughs> so, well, uh, in the first segment, you might have seen Guy talking about how he wanted to be a rover. He wanted to be like Jaws Hardback. Now, Jaws Hardback is this mythical alligator crocodile noun uh, who is nowhere to be seen. Uh, we don't know where he is, right? But he was clearly driven away by the France, who are basically now in charge and run the city. Um, and we would get to see a little bit more about what their motivations are, how are they exactly doing it, and, you know, like how they come in conflict with Guy and his folks. Uh, the entire idea of France was that are they going to be a worthy opponent in the story uh, to the nouns, and what is this conflict about? Are you guys, with with the advent of the frowns coming into the picture, are you going to have to put one of those disclaimers at the start of the movie? Uh, any resemblance of these characters to, to real people, <laughs> real or fake, is, is completely they coincidental, et cetera, et cetera? <laughs> they certainly will not look like real people. So, <laughs> but, I was, think, uh, I was yeah, thinking I a little think, more metaphorical yeah. than that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and uh, what, one of the things there, there was that, you know, like the frowns, are sort of derived from similar nounish traits, but we wanted to make them look very cunning and menacing. And you can see the early sort of designs which have been shared now in terms of concepts. So they, they are very unique. And the idea there has been that, oh, if they are menacing, they will not have the same sort of cute uh, vibes the nouns traits carry. So how do, how do you make something which is cute do something which is like really menacing and people would be scared of them. Uh, and that's something which we have been exploring with the idea of nouns here, uh, frowns here. And the intent there is that frowns and nouns are basically coming from the same sort of core. They are just differentiated in two different clans based on their ideology and what they want to do. Sounds familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> You're talking a little bit about the plot here. Um, I'd love to hear just a couple words about the plot development. I know Jack asked earlier about the world building and the aesthetic. But I'd love to know what it was like to try to figure out the plot for something like this. First of all, with a decentralized team who are not all in the same room. Second of all, knowing that this could just be a one and done because maybe the first... You know, maybe the first pilot gets approved and then nothing else gets approved right. by the Dow. So that's your, your work, your body of work stands the test of time as one single right. pilot. Um, how do you, yeah, how do you get around that? How do you write in that kind of a, an environment? Yeah, so what, what we started to do was um, when we were world building, we, before world building, we started to look into what did we want to do, right? Um, so I mentioned action, adventure, comedy. So we sort of first narrowed into that genre um, where we wanted to say that, oh, what are the North Stars in terms of the stories we like, right? So whether it's like a up 
or a Lego movie or Arcane or into the Spider-Verse. So we sort of went into like establishing that aesthetic as well as world story metrics. And then using that as a baseline, we started to build an overview where every episode we sort of know what this arc is um, at a very high level, right? And then based on that arc, we are basically spending time scripting it in the initial first couple of weeks at every tranche. So, you know, uh, William, when he was writing it, he wrote the first entire pilot and then he also wrote the overview at the same time when we are writing it. And now he came back for this tranche and now he's using the second chapter as the baseline overview and then expanding upon it as he's writing through the script. And basically, we'll just keep doing the same thing over and over. Awesome. So you guys did the first tranche of the pilot, which was uh, six minutes. Am I right? That was a six minute piece. That, that, that was four and a half minutes. Four, four and, and a half, half minutes. minutes. We right. originally it felt like wanted six to do because it was so good. <laughs> yeah, we originally wanted to do three and a half, but then we felt that it was being rushed. So you know, like I, we would not, you know, like be hung up about the minutes if that doesn't make sense for the story. So we pushed mm -hmm. it for four and a half. Um, this time around, the idea is to go for at least 10 and a half, but like it probably would be like 11, 11 and a half. Uh, but we are right. trying to keep the pacing uh, in a way that it makes sense. So it's not going to be as fast paced as say the animations you have seen from 3D Print Guy because they were short films. They were meant to be fast paced, but this is more long form and movie. So you need to give it enough time to appreciate the characters, their backstories. What was the response like to releasing that out into the world? I would say uh, uh, pretty good, right? I, I think uh, people overall liked it, like on whether social media or when we released it on YouTube and, you know, like shared it across uh, the people. And I think uh, everyone was sort of, pleasantly surprised based on how fast it's coming together and how good the quality still is. So that was something which was sort of a shock, shock vector for everyone. <laughs> um, I do feel that because of how long the second one is going to be, it's going to be even better. So we definitely, oh, there is a really interesting segment I can't talk about uh, right in the beginning of the, the second episode which really pushes uh, our animation team. It's a very fast paced sort of sequence traversing through the world. So we'll see a lot more parts, a lot more neighborhoods, like go beyond where the first scene was sort of filmed in. I can't wait. You already let slip a little bit of alpha earlier that we might see a little more of the noun square than we saw with just the little noun, the, the nounie that made it into part one. So I'm excited now. As a, I wanted to see, I mean, first of all, congratulations to you and your team. 118,000 views in just four weeks of being out on YouTube. Mm -hmm. To me, I think that has to be one of the most viewed nouns content ever, uh, which is awesome. I wanted to know, is, do you guys feel like, what, what metrics were you all looking for? And is it exceeding that at all? Or you're hitting where you think that you were going to be? Or I, I think it's, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, going, it's, at par of where we were thinking it's going to be, you know, like we were not expecting, oh, you know, like few million things overnight, but it's a journey, right? So the movie is not done until next year towards Q3. So we have a lot of time to curate that. And that's part of the reason why we wanted to be intentional in making sure that we are bringing more people into the fold. So it's not just the Naunish community, it's Naunish communities and now niche media wins together if there are more eyes to watch it right and that's that's the idea there and uh, that also makes the discussions with future distribution partners really really exciting if they see that there is a community there are a group of people who celebrate it and like that sort of anticipating new chapters coming in um, can we talk about the score again for a minute? We touched on it just yes. briefly earlier, but I definitely wanted to highlight that because, you know, sometimes I've just been listening to it almost like a low, a lo-fi vibe on YouTube. It is all yes. available on YouTube. It's available on Spotify. Um, really amazing uh, score for this just f five minute piece of, of film. Can you talk a little bit about who made that and, and the process of making that? 
Yeah, absolutely. So uh, the score has been directed by Jakub, uh, Jakub Petrus. Uh, Jakub is a Poland-based music composer. And um, when we reached out, uh, he has been someone who has done scoring for like animation productions before. And uh, his signature style is very um, Nordic, Irish sort of uh, European scoring, which which you might have seen in How to Train Your Dragon or yes. uh, the Brave movie, right? And I think that was something which really taps into like the epic vibe we wanted to explore here in the movie as well. So not necessarily, you know, like uh, very pop-like, but more expansive sort of epic in the middle of epic and sci-fi is what we wanted yeah. to go after. So we reached out to Jakob. Jakob loved the script and the pilot and he obviously was interested. Uh, so, you know, like we brought him on board and uh, yeah, uh, he has been scoring based on the script. A majority of the score he was able to do himself and then he brought more musicians into the fold, which you have seen probably in the behind the scenes uh, videos as well um, to, you know, like compose. And now as it's going bigger and bigger, we are also looking at, um, this is another alpha, we are also looking at uh, actually introducing a song, which would be an original song into the, inside the movie as well. So we are uh, talking to a few musicians uh, singers and hopefully that will Amazing. make it part into the OST and will be you know like released in the same uh, sort of album which is being uh, edited. <laughs> you got if, if you're looking for producers, you got to get a hold of uh, Super Tight Woody. He's if, I don't know if you know him or not, but he's amazing and yes. very nanish. And he'd be awesome to collaborate on something like that. That's exciting. Um, are we speaking of the score itself? Uh, what, what's the licensing on that? Would we be able to use an excerpt of that in the podcast today? When we're yeah, releasing? you can, you can absolutely. Yeah, yeah you I can. think that'd be a pretty epic way to to bring us into this podcast is using some of that that score. Yeah. Uh, Jack, any any other questions you've got on your list here before we let Suprio uh, enjoy the rest of his Thursday? No, now now I can't think of any. I I'm just I'm. Honestly, I was so blown away by what you all produced. Um, I'm extremely excited. I've shown it to my daughter a ton. She loves it. I think that's a great sign. It's uh, it's clever and artistic. I love the style. The score is, is really awesome, and I'm not just trying to blow smoke. I just I didn't know what to expect, and it, I was, uh, yeah, I think it's great. I love it. Love it. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Well, uh, you know, like if, uh, the DAO continues to fund it, you know, like this would be like an epic now niche media the DAO would have produced in a year. That's, that's pretty epic, I would say. <laughs> so to, to recap, I guess, what's happened so far with Atrium X Nouns, we had a small film or short film that was created by you folks first as sort of, um, I guess, a, an MVP or a proof of yeah. concept, which was completely separate from, from Noun's movie. It was just a, a fun uh, movie, a, a short film about a, a fox noun making his way through the city on a skateboard. Really great. Uh, love that animation. I'm going to link it below in the podcast notes so people can go and take a look at it, watch it if they haven't watched it already. Um, after that, you put up your proposal for the first tranche of this Noun's movie. Um, it, was, it was approved by the DAO. Um, you made it. You released it. You executed. It uh, was extremely well received. You immediately were you were smart. You followed right up with another prop, saying you love this. You want more? You got to pay the man, pay the pay the decentralized studio. It passed. Uh, it was a bigger ask, obviously, because it's uh, almost you know more, like you said more than twice the amount of content. So what yes. is next? Take us out. Uh, let us know what to expect next from Atrium. Yeah, absolutely. Well, uh, Atrium is. Uh full speed ahead on uh, the chapter two and chapter two is going to be coming out in October. So we just have about three months to make it happen. It's, it's, it's a crazy timeline, but after chapter two, our production pipeline would be fully mature to keep accelerating. So we'll be able to shrink uh, time between chapters as we go along. Amazing. So there are some economies of scale you're saying, even though each tranche has yes. to be done separately. Yes, yes, yes. Good to hear. Maybe a final question, Jack, we could just ask, which we ask a lot of uh, artists and folks who are creating in this ecosystem. What is it like to create 
you know, with nouns in partnership with nouns. For other, you know, animators who might be listening in here or, or people who do art in any field, what's your experience been like working with this sort of, you know, headless monster of a DAO um, and, and trying to make everybody happy? Yeah, well, uh, I, I think uh, uh, the mantra there is to not do art by democracy. You just make really good art. And if you're good at what you do, I think everybody would like it. So I, I think... Uh, the the idea of a headless brand is that it lets you do your best work and it rallies behind your work. So you have a set of really prolific fans who basically propagate what you do. So I think that's something which is really, really exciting for the artists to be involved in. I think that's a good point because sometimes people hear a decentralized movie and they're like, that's crazy. You know, like they think what's going to happen is like everyone's going to vote on every frame of the movie. Absolutely like, there's, there's no way yeah. that can happen. It's not possible. <laughs> no. But the reality of like decentralization in practice is that something like NounsDAO, even though there are like 400 odd members who you know, represent 700 votes in the DAO um, and they are making decisions on major like milestones, that's really what it is. It's more like an executive producer, like Jack said yes. earlier, where we're kind of trying to like, you know, have touch points on, on guiding where this thing goes, but also ultimately giving you as, as artists and as creators leeway to, you know, interpret yeah. the IP in the way that you want to. And that's what decentralized creation is about. It's, you know, here's the funds, you know, here's, here's the mandate, um, go and do what, what you can with it. And if you don't execute and you don't do anything exciting, well, you know, there's no punishment except you just probably won't get funded anymore. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, you know, like that, that's, that's a trade off. I think artists, like us, we were willing to make. And I think um, I agree with your point. Decentralization is not designing by committee. Like that's a lose-lose path to take. So it's mm -hmm. always about how do you curate what you want your feedback on. And if you are able to, you know, like control that, I think it becomes really, really efficient. So we do not want nouns to micromanage the movie but we do want them to be involved and excited by it and you know like see how it's coming together and celebrate it <laughs> at the same time like choose your own adventures uh, yeah. books have always been huge you know when i was a kid that was all the rage we used to have these things called books where you'd open them up there were paper you'd read them <laughs> And uh, Choose Your Own Adventures were huge. You know, I loved those when I was a kid. And even uh, there was a resurgence uh, a couple years back when Netflix had their Bandersnatch and there was kind of a resurgence yes. of that idea of like, yes. how could you make a movie where you get to choose, you know, how it ends? I think there's something interesting about that. And you guys are doing it. I mean, basically, this is in a sense, Choose Your Own Adventure to some degree, because every touch point, every tranche, the DAO gets to be like, yes, no, maybe so. And we kind of yes. choose along with you. Uh, the plot absolutely absolutely exciting. absolutely and yeah yeah the creatives would continue to put their best foot forward and hopefully you know we we see a lot more chapters to come <laughs> amazing where can people go to find out everything they want to know about nouns a movie S send them the, the right links and we'll, we'll also put yeah them in the podcast notes. yeah i think uh you Follow the Nouns Movie Twitter and you can keep up with the Nouns Movie on nouns.movie. That's the website. <laughs> Thanks so much for making time and uh, looking forward to hearing more about you guys' progress as you go along. Yeah, thanks for having me.